Hi, welcome to part two of this video series where I give you a few tips on using Design Spark Mechanical 4.2. First topic I'll be covering is the radial menu, which gives you quick access to the selection mode while you have a different tool like pull, move, or combine selected. How this works is you select one of the edges or surfaces on your 3D object and then click down on your left mouse button and while it's pressed down the right mouse button as well. Now the options here allow you to do a group selection of the connected edges on one face and also make a secondary selection on the adjacent face followed by any modifications you'd like to make in the, using the normal pull tool. List of options also change based on whether you have the select tool, combine or move tool selected. Feel free to play around with it and I'm sure you'll find it quite useful. You're also able to adjust the timing setting on how long you need to have the left mouse button pressed down by going into file, design spark options, down into control options and under show radial menu. Next topic is on how you can use mathematical expressions or operators to enter dimensions into lines or other sketched objects. For example, I want to create a line which has the value of the square root of 2. Then I go into sketch mode, select lines, choose a starting point, click the space bar, then enter SQRT space 2, and then enter. If you want to check the value, what you'd like to do is use the select tool and that shows you 1.414, that's approximately the square root of 2. Now to get the other list of mathematical expressions and operators that are permitted in DSM, please check the link below in the description of this video. The next topic is how you can switch between rendering styles of the solids in your workspace in order to find any cavities or holes that may be buried inside the solid and are not viewable in the shaded mode. So switch to the display tab drop down graphics and choose wireframe. As you can see, there is a buried hollow cylinder within the first solid, which would not otherwise be discoverable in the shaded mode. So this may be relevant to you in certain projects that you may be working on. You can also quickly toggle back to a different uh, graphic style by dropping down and click on shaded mode again. Next, is how you can split your current workspace into multiple viewports whereby you can view different perspectives of your design. To do so, switch to the display tab, go to the window group, drop down on split, and then choose the number of viewports or different perspectives you'd like to see. You're able to change the perspective in each of these viewports by clicking down on it until you see a highlighted orange border show up. Go into design, under orient, choose isometric, trimetric or any of the other views. You can also spin the model with your middle mouse button and choose a custom view. Again to switch back into the single viewport, click on split and then one viewport. The next topic is on how you can import point curve text files that are generated by coordinate measuring machines or known as CMMs. Firstly, you'd need to import the coordinates into a standard text file. Uh, so for which you can open the notepad program and then enter the set of coordinates into it. And at the header of the file, as you can see in this example, you will need to enter a few keywords or options so as to enable DSM on how to read this point curve text file. So in this case, I've set 3D 
to a value of true. That means this curve is in a 3D space and is spread in all x, y, and z axis. Polyline is set to false, which means that spline curves will be created through the coordinate specified. If it is straight to set to true, only straight lines will connect each of the coordinates. And then each coordinate is separated by a line break, a blank line would indicate that it is the start of a new curve. The other keywords or options available for building point curve text files are specified in this tutorial.